You know, I just spent the last 10 minutes yelling about going to the circus and I didn't even have record on. I'm just sitting here like a moron and we're talking about going to the circus and it was all wasted. I don't even know what I said. Something about elephant, elephants or clowns or something. The, the bottom line is uh, I don't like to go out. And if I do go out, I'm not going to the circus. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to take a detour from our usual Intune uh, stuff to talk about uh, Entra Private Access which is a new feature that will allow our cloud-native PC to access on-premise resources like a file share without the need for VPN or direct line of sight. So this is going to be really cool. No, and you can forget it because of clowns. I hate clowns. Disgusting. Get Rubik's. Solving for the modern workplace. We're in Entra. We're going to go to Global Secure Access. And this is all still in preview, right? Um, so it's a good idea to go to get started. And you're gonna basically be able to choose between private access and internet access. Today, we're just talking about private access. This is basically a way to, without VPN, to get uh, cloud native endpoints, or you know, you can do this with hybrid join as well, but our purpose is to get cloud native endpoints access to our domain resources uh, without VPN. So uh, this will bring us to the learn page. And obviously there's a lot of stuff here, but I just wanted to point you to the prereqs, right? Um, as far as this is still in preview, you need at least the Entra ID P1 license. And I'm gonna put the link below so you can look at the other network requirements. But from a licensing perspective, if you have P1, which most folks have, you're fine. So I'm gonna go down to connect and go to traffic forwarding. So what I what you have to do is you have to onboard one of these. I already turned on private access profile and that's what we're looking for. And this is the piece that allows access to the on-prem resources. And you have to assign it to a group of users. For now, I've chosen to assign to all my users, but you can scope this to specific groups if you'd like, which is, probably a good idea in the future. Okay, so my next stop is to go down to connectors. So we're going to need this network connector in order to um, basically run this on the domain. Um, and this is pretty much the same as the Azure app proxy. So what I am going to do is I'm going to grab this from the domain so I could just download it right there. Uh, there's Edge. Let's do that. Okay, we're back over here, connect, connectors, and let's go ahead now that we're on the AD server, download the service connector. I do accept those terms. Um, you need 2012 R2 or higher. This is a 2022 server or 2019 server. Uh, this is 2022, so we have, uh, we have very much met the minimum requirements, so... I am going to go to my downloads, Microsoft Entra Private Network Connector. Oops. Name is right on the nose there. We're going to go ahead and install that. And of course, we're going to auth in so they make it really easy. They're going to take care of the connection for us. You just sign in with your credentials. Obviously, we're not doing this without our Dunkin' Donuts cold brew. That's another requirement. Starbucks might work also. Okay, the setup's been successful. We do have to restart the server in order to proceed. Uh, while that's restarting, I'm back here on my other box. You can see we already see it now under private network connectors. So it's active. Um, that's the name of the machine. So it, it shows up immediately, which is really good. I'm going to take an opportunity to address some comments and questions I got when I showed kind of the basics of drive mapping yesterday. Um, I can't stress enough, and I did say this, but I say a lot of things, so sometimes it's easy to miss. We're going from fundamentals, the way mechanics work, how to connect from cloud to on-prem. There are a lot of options here. Some folks use always on VPN. Some folks just let the user do it manually. 
Some folks use third party tools. And the reason why I said there's a lot more coming is I also wanted to show this. So, you know, options is the name of the game. Every organization is different. There's not a silver bullet in most cases. So this is just one of the things we're going to be touching on. So I click on enterprise applications and new application. Uh, we're going to call this SMB file share. We're going to add the application segment. Now this just specifies what we're connecting to. I'm going to click on the fully qualified domain name. So this would be dco1.rubixdev.com. So that's the, that's the name of my cert, my file share server and the ports. Um, I'm just going to do four, four, five. Um, that's all you should need for SMB. If you were doing remote desktop, you would have 3389 and obviously any respective port for the service, but we'll leave it at that. So I'm gonna hit save. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna verify traffic between, uh, you know, basically what I'm trying to ping up here and then the connector on-prem and make sure that it's established and that'll be my application. Great. So with that there, I'm going to go back to enterprise applications and we should see it SMB file share. And like any other app here, you can do roles and administrations, users or groups. I'm going to add users who can access this. I'm going to just choose all employees. It's a group I have that is looking for basically all active users. So we're going to kind of keep this simple for now. The next thing we have to do is we have to enable access on our devices. So we have to grab our client. So you can see that the client, uh, they have an early access Mac one. There are apps for iOS and Android. So this works across the board and we're gonna deploy this with, um, with Intune. But take a look at the requirements here. Microsoft Enter joined. You need local admin permissions to install. Of course, we're going to install that with Intune. Um, so it's, it's designed for the cloud native device, right? So there we go. Global access client, not a problem. Okay, so folder called GSA, oh, GSA client. And we're going to put the client in there. We're also going to put the WinApp util in there. So I'm going to click on this, run it as administrator. And our setup file, of course, will be the global secure access client. Gotta love these names. They're very accurate. All right. So what I'm going to do is in another tab, I'm going to open Intune up. We are going to go to apps, windows, add. I'm going to hit select. And we are going to say we want the GSA client. So we're going to call this global secure access client. Uh, I'm going to just take this cool description line and be a little fancy here. Publisher is Microsoft. And you know what? Because uh, I'm feeling fancy, I went ahead and grabbed this logo. I'm going to throw that up there too. So we're, we're going to look really professional now. Okay. So how do we install this? It's global secure access client.exe install switch quiet. Very easy. And we can do the same for the uninstall. Just change install to uninstall and you're good to go. There we go. It's going to be system. It's going to run on uh, 64 bit windows, whatever version. Obviously, it's only built for later ones, but whatever. And our detection rule is going to be the path it ends up sitting on. So it's going to be the file path. It's in C program files. Global secure access client. And the file name is, of course, global secure access client.exe and we want the file or folder to exist. I'm going to make it available for all users just so we can see it. 
All right, so that finished. Now we play the waiting game. Let me pop open some virtual clients and see what the deal is. Okay, so just to confirm the machine I'm on, I am on a cloud native machine. Login is Morty. Um, and this is the same machine we had the network drive on, but I killed the VPN connection and um, I'm, I'm pretty much gonna, you know, th this is dead here because, right, I, I don't have connectivity to the domain anymore. Um, so we're not on the network. Uh, I killed the VPN. Okay, so yeah, this is just out in the cloud with no on-prem access or resources. Okay, so you can see the global secure access client is here. I'm going to go ahead and install it. And obviously this, you can push this out as, you know, required. I just speeding up the process here. So we'll let it do its thing. Kind of like that I added the description in the picture. I, it makes me feel better about myself. It's a, it's a good, it's a, feels good. Boom, look at that. So it can tell what I'm already signed in with. So I'm going to authenticate with my Azure creds. Um, it's going to prompt me for MFA. Um, all right, I'm going to block this out because I don't need people calling me. Okay, verification complete. All right, so let's see. First, let's see what I messed up in the detection method. No, oh, they're actually, okay, I messed up the name. Client checker. All right, no biggie. It installed. All right, so let's do a quick uh, NS lookup. NS lookup. Rebix dev. DC01. DC01.rubixdev.com. Okay. Now I just want to show you on a machine that doesn't have this. So this is my normal box. This is not connected in any way. NS lookup. Rubix dev DC01. Rubix dev.com. Right. Can't, can't find it. It's non existent. Right. So, you know, it's because of the secure access client. So I want to take the full file path and see if I can get to my shares. Uh, so I'm going to do server share a. Yay, got to my stuff. You can see I'm on the network. I could go back, see the rest of the files. Look at that. No VPN, nothing. Um, and actually, if we wanted to adjust our map drive script for this, so I can do rubix.rubixdev.com share A. Look at that. You can even map a network drive over it. I think that's pretty cool. No VPN, right? Just out over the internet um using azure authentication and i'm going to show you one more thing that we're going to get into later but i think is very cool i'm going to go to um conditional access in my tenant because this has a lot of security implications if i wanted to put some security policy around this i want to do a specific app take a look at this I can put parameters around this so I can say, listen, for all my uh, here, select that. That's fine. For all my users, I am going to require the device to be marked as compliant and obviously test it with report only. But what this will do is on premise file shares. So if you want to talk about security, that means in order to access those, right, in order to get to my on-prem file shares, which is classified as an application, you have to be on an Intune compliant device. And you have to have secure access and you can put any parameters around this. You can put MFA, you can put 
You know, if you want to do this with a client cert, we'll get into that. Very exciting stuff. This is really a big step forward for Microsoft, right? This is our, you know, big step in a in a post VPN world. Um, you know, kind of getting to that zero trust mindset where your file share or your resource or app on prem is just another uh, location that we are going to either sanction or unsanction. So. You know, we kind of started with map drives and we took this giant turn. We'll sh we're still going to talk about other ways to do it, but this is really, really cool. And uh, I think when you're on your journey to the cloud native device, it's important that we start looking outside of Intune and just see what capabilities Entra brings. So we'll be seeing you.